Welcome! In this video I'm going to show you how you can determine quantiles uh, using R. Uh, I'm using Jupyter Notebook but the code will also run in R Studio. Um, uh, quantiles are a generalized term of uh, things like quartiles, quintiles, deciles, percentiles. They simply split the data into k parts. So for example for quartiles you can use k equals uh, 4 and it will then split the data into four parts and therefore the first and you get the quartile so the first quartile shows 25 percent of all the scores should be less than or equal to the first quartile and therefore 75 percent will be higher or equal to there's some more details you can read that in the file itself I have a separate video where I show you how you can easily do this with my own library which has a function for this um, some of the methods are also available um, in R's uh, default uh, libraries but in this video I'm going to focus on how you can do it almost from scratch for that I'll use some other examples than I used in the other parts um, I have four data file, uh, four factors with uh, each one more than the previous one that's why it's called example 8 because it has 8 numbers in there uh, 9, 10 and 11 I'll store them also as one list and also their labels for later on. Quite useful might be the sample size for each, which can easily be done with the length function, and I also store those as one factor. All right, now the first two methods I like to discuss are inclusive and exclusive. Those are also only used for quartiles, so if you have a quantile uh, with k equals 4. Um, and to understand the difference between these two, um, what we can do is we have a look at the median first. The median splits the data into two parts. And that's fairly easy to do if we have an even um, number of scores. So for example, with our um, uh, example with eight scores, it's one to four and the other half would be five to eight. And for our 10, it's one to five and six to 10. But then what if it's not an even number? Then the split, well, we can either say well that median then belongs to both sides or the median and that's what the inclusive method does so that will look something like this yeah, we include the median into both the lower and the upper and here the same thing or we can say well we excluding it so it doesn't belong to either one of them so here you can see the median is actually missing five and here the median was six is also missing so that creates quite a few different methods. So here there are uh, so we have two different versions for each uh, sample that we have. Now the inclusive method therefore says well we take then actually the and oh sorry that's done already up here uh, the quartiles are then actually um, the median of each of those halves. So with the exclusive method we take the median of these four uh, which would be 2.5 so it would be between these two well if we did the same with the inclusive method with this one then it should be simply three so that's you see will give differences so this shows all the different possibilities of our four sample sizes um, if you prefer to use a formula here are some formulas that can find the index that you need um, for the inclusive and the exclusive method so uh, depending on if n mod 2 that simply checks if it's even uh, if it's even use this uh, and otherwise use that um, so that's two specific versions for uh, quartiles only but you can also for quartiles use any of the quantile methods and the quantile methods they start usually by looking at how do you determine the index that you need I've come across all these different methods uh, the most simple is simply to say well I take the proportion and multiply it by the sample size so for quartiles 25 percent of the sample size uh, the SAS4 method says no you add one uh, and then you multiply it by that proportion so here for example if I have 0% then it's 0 times n equals 0 so I have an index of 0 which doesn't exist so that might give some issues um, I just say no you just add there for 1 and then you multiply it uh, some say well you multiply it first and then you add a half or you subtract one which is the Excel uh, version and then you multiply and then you add one or these two fancy versions from Hinman and Fenn 
They're not too complicated, so let's make one function that can actually do all these different indexing methods. Uh, the most difficult ones were the inclusive and exclusive, and this just follows those formulas. So uh, if it's the third quartile, then uh, use this one. Uh, if it's the first quartile, check if it's modulo 2 equals 0, then use this one, otherwise use that one. And for all the other methods, it's fairly straightforward. So we can use this uh, function later on. So for example, if I want to see um, from my uh, sample size of 8 um, and the first quartile and use the Excel method, then the index should give me, in this case, 2.75. Now this index itself is either an integer, which usually makes it easier, um, or it's a fraction, as in this case. Now, if it's an integer, I've seen two different ways. In almost all cases, they will use simply then that index, so the second score, of course, after the scores have been sorted. Um, but there's one method that actually said, even if it's an integer, you just take the midpoint, which basically says you change again the index, even if it's an integer, uh, by adding a half. So that gives two options. Now, if it's a fraction, we have quite a lot of different options. The first one is to use so-called linear interpolation. So in this case, it's saying, well, it's 2.75. So you need 75% uh, because it's between 2 and 3, but it's 75% away from uh, from the 2. So you look at the index of 2, you look at the index of 3, uh, and then you look and you also take 75% of that difference. And that's what this formula actually does. Um, I'm using as rounding, we'll get back to that uh, soon. Uh, this is the floor function, so it basically means to always round down. And the up one is simply to round always up. Um, then the linear interpolation we can write as a small function. If it's an integer, we simply don't change it and otherwise do this formula. Luckily, R has a floor and a ceiling function, so we don't need to worry about that. And this simply can do then that uh, linear interpolation. Besides linear interpolation, we can also use roundings. Now, there are different types of rounding, so we can round down, we can round up, but we can also use uh, rounding to the nearest even integer, which says to round to the nearest even number. So 2.5, well, um, it's closest to 2 uh, because it's further away from 4, so we round it to 2. But 1.5 is closer to 2 as well. Um, so this also gets rounded to 2. Uh, this is sometimes referred to as the banker's method uh, and is actually the default in R. Um, I use these brackets to indicate rounding to the nearest integer, which is to, if it ends at 0.5, then you always round up. Uh, and if it's less than 0.5, you round down. And uh, besides uh, having to do always rounding a 0.5 up, you could also say to always round a 0.5 always down, so that's where I use in these type of brackets. The last option with these roundings is then to simply use again the midpoint, so you round the fraction um, and uh, you also round it uh, down and you round it up and then you take the average of the two. Um, this can actually vary per quartile and even therefore also if the proportion is less than 50% or above 50%, so you have two choices each time. Um, the basic method in R is for round is that banker's rounding, so we don't need anything special for that. There's a floor and a ceiling function, which leaves the nearest method, which we can actually do by simply saying, well, you add a half to the index and then you round down. That should give the same result as uh, the nearest rounding. For half down, we actually check uh, if it ends exactly at a half. Uh, if not, we can simply use the same as we've done uh, with the nearest rounding. And otherwise, we use the same as we've done with the nearest rounding, but subtract one because it should be rounding down. Um, if linear interpolation is done, we don't need to round anything, so we simply uh, can write a small function that can do all of these different types of roundings for us. That 
basically gives us all we need. So below I've made a small function. Uh, it takes, of course, the data and the quantile that we want to determine. And then it's using the indexing uh, method we want to use. So uh, we can use that indexing method function. Um, then what to do if the index is an integer? Well, if it is an integer uh, and we want to use the midpoint, then we do the midpoint rounding. Uh, and otherwise, um, if it's not an integer, um, we can set what to do if it's the quantile is below 50% or if it's above 50% and what type of rounding it should then use. So we'll feed all of those options as a, um, as a vector and this function then should finally give us the quantile. Um, now, as I mentioned, there are quite a lot of different methods. Uh, I've labeled them, as you can see in here, and um, they all vary in these things. So uh, what type of indexing they're using, uh, what they do if the index is an integer, and what type of rounding to use if uh, the proportion is less than 0.5, and what to do if it's bigger than 0.5. Here are all the references for those and alternative namings. Um, I've also listed them as one big list uh, with all of them in here, kind of like a dictionary. So then I can simply call each of them and for example, use it like this and see that the quantile, for example, A to 75% uh, percent using the exclusive method gives me 6.25. I can actually check all the different versions by looping over all of them and then you get a nice long data frame with all the different variations. Alright, I hope this video was helpful. Sorry it was so long, but yeah, there were a lot of different options to go over. Uh, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video.